I, 40, male, was married to my wife, 37, female, for almost 12 years. We would have celebrated our 12th marriage anniversary in a few months, but unfortunately, she passed away around six weeks ago. My wife was diagnosed with leukemia around five years ago, and she fought long and hard, but I still lost her. I spent a lot of time with her in these past few years and was her primary caregiver, so I don't regret anything since I know that I tried my very best. My wife was a writer before she passed. She'd written some stories, but it was known to only a very niche audience, so it didn't earn much, which is why she took to ghostwriting and made a load of money. I have a bookstore of my own, and while I'm not as successful as my wife, I still make a comfortable living on my own. In my wife's will, she left me most of her money and assets, which was quite a lot. After settling her medical bills, it came up to around $750,000. She'd left her family with $75,000 as well, but nothing else, and even that seemed way too much for me. The reason was that her family wasn't really very attached to her, and even in her last days, they barely ever visited her in hospital. They would only ever call when they needed money, and she would happily send them whatever amount they said. But I guess while she was in the hospital, she realized that they didn't love her as much as she thought they did, which made her change her will and leave a lot less money to them than she'd initially intended to. Her family included her parents and her two younger brothers, both in their late 30s now. One of them runs their family diner and the other works at a law firm. Anyway, last week her family dropped by very unexpectedly and said that they had to discuss something urgent with me. I was a little confused since they had barely even spoken to me after the funeral or even while my wife was sick, as a matter of fact. So them just visiting me out of the blue to talk about something important seemed kind of fishy to me. Once they were seated, they brought out a bunch of papers and told me to go through them. They were letters and notices from several people about my wife's debts. And now that they've received word that she's passed away, they need me to clear those debts at the earliest or else I'll be in trouble. I was shocked since I didn't even know that my wife had any debts to speak of since she lived a clean life. And like I mentioned earlier, we didn't need to borrow money. We were comfortable enough to afford the things we wanted or needed, so this whole debt business seemed crazy to me. Her family explained that she'd racked up a lot of debts while she'd been living by herself and still hadn't paid them off even though she had the means to. She told them to keep it a secret from me, but now the debtors were harassing them and they couldn't afford to pay it all off at once since it was all coming up to $100,000 because of the time and interest. I was dumbstruck at that moment, since even though I definitely could pay it all off, it would create a significant dent. And I also found it very hard to believe that someone as meticulous as my wife would refuse to pay her debts off. There was a short period before we met and after she'd moved out of her family home, where she'd been living on her own and hadn't yet made it as a writer yet, that she told me about, so that part of the story definitely checked out. She'd even confessed to having a hard time dealing with the bills and said that she'd had to take up several tutoring jobs to be able to make ends meet before her book was finally published, but she never mentioned anything about loans or debts. And not once in our 12 years of marriage had anything of the sort ever come up, so her family's visit and these papers had taken me by surprise. I could hardly believe that my wife would do something like this and keep such a huge secret from me. And the more I thought about it, the less likely it seemed. I told her family that I'd need some time to arrange for the money since they'd requested it to be in all cash and they seemed kind of annoyed that I wasn't just handing them over the money right then and there, but they didn't say anything and told me I had a week. The next day, however, I decided to talk to my late wife's secretary to discuss her finances because something about this whole situation just seemed off. 
I asked her if my wife had ever mentioned any debts of the sort and even showed her the papers and she looked just as surprised as I did. She told me that my wife had absolutely zero debts left to clear before she passed and so these were news to her. These debtors were all loan sharks as well so I didn't really have any way to check out if they were legit or not and so cold documents that I'd been handed were mostly letters about how it would be unwise to try to evade them any longer now that they'd finally tracked us down and seemed threatening, if I'm being honest. For a second, I thought my best bet would be to just give her family the money and let them take care of it all. But I just couldn't shake the feeling that I was being toyed with. So I decided to speak to my wife's best friend, her cousin, and she ended up telling me a lot of things that drove away any fear that I had. She told me that all those papers that I'd been handed were probably forged by my wife's parents since they'd been after her money ever since she made a name for herself as a writer. She hadn't even left home voluntarily. She'd been kicked out by her parents after college since she'd wanted to be a writer and her parents didn't think it was a very stable career option. After a lot of fights and arguments, they told her that they weren't interested in speaking to her unless she started making sufficient money and kicked her out. That really hurt her, but she didn't turn back or give up and started working part-time as a waitress, tutoring kids, and even working on her books alongside all of that to keep going. And no, she'd never taken a single loan from anyone and was completely self-made. My wife's friend was 100% convinced that my in-laws were lying to me and told me to test my theory by speaking to my lawyer and cross-checking and just to decline my in-laws' request to see how they react. So I took her advice and decided to tell her family that I was not giving them any money and I would deal with the debtors directly myself. And just as I'd expected... They were outraged at the suggestion and started telling me that the money had to be handed over to them first in any case, and my refusing to do so meant that I didn't trust them. I was already feeling pretty suspicious about the whole situation, and their reaction just confirmed all my doubts. They most definitely were lying, and all it would take was for my lawyer to deduce if the documents were forged or not. So after a couple of days, he confirmed that all the loan sharks that they'd named had been contacted and none of them had ever even heard of, let alone loaned any money to my wife. So she was in the clear. I just couldn't believe that her family was harassing their late daughter's husband for money just a couple of weeks after her passing. This was the lowest thing that they could do and they did so. Honestly, if they just asked me for money, then I probably would have given it to them anyway because I have way more than enough right now to lead a comfortable life. But they chose to lie and trick me and even try to make my wife seem like a careless and dishonest person, which I absolutely could not forgive. They've been trying to contact me, but I haven't responded yet because I don't know what to say to them yet. They'd planned to just throw me under the bus and take much more than they were owed. And in my opinion, they weren't owed much since they'd never bothered to treat my wife well. So I think even what she left for them was much more than they deserved. I'm thinking about cutting them off entirely and suing them for the money that my wife had left to them. They don't deserve it even one bit. And I could think of several other people who'd actually been there for her when she was sick and could do with the money very honestly. W-I-B-T-A if I sued my late wife's family over their inheritance? Update 1. I finally answered their calls and spoke to my father-in-law. He was pestering me about the money and asked me when I'd be handing them the cash since the debtors were hounding them mercilessly now. Obviously, I knew that he was lying to me now and I told him that I'd cross-checked with our family lawyer and I knew that he'd faked all those papers just to take the money from me, and he could drop the act now. For the first few minutes after my accusation, he pretended not to know what I was talking about and said that I'd lost my mind, but I remained firm on my point, and eventually he was forced to admit that he'd been lying. But then he started trying to emotionally manipulate me by saying that it was totally unfair 
that my wife had left most of her money to me instead of them, since they're the ones who had raised her and had made her capable of becoming such a successful writer in the first place, so they were owed a lot more than they were given. It was ironic to hear him saying that because while they had raised her, they'd also been the ones to kick her out and refuse to help her out when she was struggling. They didn't even contact her until her first book started selling well, which was several years after she'd been kicked out, but she'd been kind enough to welcome them back into her life with open arms. Even then, they hadn't been kind to her and would only use her for her money. They didn't visit her when she was sick, and neither did they try to arrange anything for her funeral. So in my opinion, whatever they'd been given was more than enough. I told them that I wouldn't be giving them even a single dollar more than what they already had and informed them of my decision to sue them as well. That led to some more outrage and he tried to argue with me, but I wasn't interested in what he had to say and just hung up. I blocked them all so that they cannot contact me anymore and have told our lawyer to file a lawsuit against them at the earliest. My in-laws were served with the lawsuit today and they were very unhappy about it, obviously. But they decided to let me know how unhappy they were by paying me a visit and trying to make me feel guilty for stealing their inheritance from them. I was shocked that they'd even had the guts to show up at my house after what they tried to do. And while I told them to leave me alone from within the house itself without even opening the door, they were very stubborn and refused to leave without having a word with me first. It was my father-in-law and his wife who'd come to visit me and I think they thought that they could make me feel sorry for them by sobbing about how they were in mourning already and now they were about to lose so much money as well. I don't know why they'd believe I would buy their silly sympathy-seeking act since I for one knew exactly how heartlessly they treated my wife. She might have forgiven them because they were her family but they weren't my family, and so I had no need to forgive them at all. After they were done ranting, I told them that I wasn't going to change my mind and they needed to leave before I called the police to forcefully escort them out. That rubbed them the wrong way, and my mother-in-law started lecturing me about the importance of family values and how I should be standing by their side at a time like this when both families are grieving such a huge loss but instead I'm suing them over something as petty as money. I thought that was bold of her since they'd never thought about any of this when just weeks ago they were lying to me and trying to trick me into giving up my share of the money for their own greed. And after how they treated my wife, it was funny to hear her talk about family values because their family lacked any values at all. I told them to leave once more or else... I really would call the police and that led to them finally leaving. They were very pissed off by the time they left and told me that I would definitely lose this one, but I didn't care about winning or losing. I was doing this more for my wife than for myself. She'd never tried to put her family in their place because she was just too kind and forgiving, but I am not that person. And moreover, after my wife's death, I don't feel like I have even to try and maintain the facade of a happy relationship with my in-laws anymore. They're nothing more than parasites who were leeching off of my wife's money. And now it's time to make sure they learn what happens to leeches once they're found. I have no regrets about what I'm about to do. And if people find me ruthless, then so be it. Update three. We had the first hearing today and it was difficult facing my in-laws in such a formal and legal setting. I did think that my wife wouldn't be happy with what I'm doing and it probably isn't my place to sue them anyway for her sake, but then I remembered their capacity for cruelty even after her death and that made things a bit easier. Right off the bat, I brought up the way they tried to extort money out of me through deception and lies and they didn't decline it. Instead, they owed up to it because then they'd be able to build up to their own emotional sob story. Their lawyer accused me of manipulating their daughter to keep most of her assets and money to myself while they only received a very small sum. Apparently, I was a controlling husband who took advantage of my wife's illness and forced her to sign her will against her wishes. 
and made her leave everything to me while my in-laws were cheated out of it all. I wasn't even surprised that they were coming up with this rubbish story to malign my image since they're most certainly very capable of such things. My lawyer was there to defend me, however, and even though everyone present in the room knew that I was absolutely not the guy that they were making me out to be, we still had to prove it, and that's going to be a piece of cake for me. I guess they should have thought things through before lying through their teeth about my character, because whatever they said was certainly not going to be a match with what all of our friends and the rest of my wife's family had seen. Anyway, after the meeting, my in-law still approached me and told me to take back the lawsuit and let this go, but I wasn't going to back down, at least not now, because then they'd think that it was okay to harass me for the rest of my life, just like they'd done to my wife, and I wasn't about to let them get away with it. I told them that they could come up with all the lies about me that they wanted to, but the truth was going to be out eventually, so I wasn't too worried for myself and they couldn't intimidate me into backing off now either. My wife's brothers tried to tell me off for speaking to their parents rudely, but I had no time to spare for these people and just drove off. We'll meet again two weeks later, and I'm going to gather all the proof I can to prove that whatever they're making me out to be is absolutely not the case, and it's just a bunch of lies that they made up to get the money quicker and easier. And I know it's going to be easy for me. Update 4. Only two days have passed since the hearing and today itself my in-laws have started trying to mess with me, but they ended up worsening their own situation. It's almost 7 in the morning right now and I'd had the craziest night, honestly. At around midnight I heard some footsteps around my house, but I was really tired so I dismissed it, thinking that it must have been my exhaustion getting to me and didn't pay any mind to it and just went to sleep. Only an hour later, I was woken by the sound of glass breaking and the loud thud outside my house, followed by another two. I was really alarmed and stayed in bed for the next few minutes until I was sure that my neighbors were outside as well. As soon as I heard the hub-hub outside, I went out to check what had happened and saw that all the windows of my neighbor's car had been smashed in with rocks that had messages scrawled on them in chalk. It said, back off, in white letters, and immediately I knew that this was probably something that my wife's brothers had done. It was hilarious to me that instead of making sure that they were getting the right car, they'd ruined the wrong one. My neighbor was a young woman in her late 20s who had a toddler, and she worked hard, and she'd been excited about this car as well. She'd bought it just a few weeks ago, and now it had been messed up. She was distraught and was sobbing even after the cops had been called because obviously this was bound to hurt. I explained the situation to her and how my wife's brothers must have gotten the wrong car in the dark. My car was in the garage, but my neighbor usually leaves her car parked in the driveway since her garage was being renovated. I even offered to pay for the repairs right away, but she told me that I need not worry about this in the middle of everything that I've got going on and said that she'd handle it. Of course, she meant that she was going to press charges against my wife's brothers and make them pay for it, which just made me feel better. She was really sweet about it, thankfully, probably because she'd been good friends with my wife. But anyway, around 15 minutes after that, the police showed up on the scene and we explained everything to them as well. And I even provided the address of the brothers to them. I went down to the police station with my neighbor while another one of our neighbors offered to stay home with her kid and there we had to wait for around half an hour while they made the arrest. It didn't take too long even though they tried to resist like fools. They'd been so sure that they had the right car and that I wouldn't dare call the cops on them that they'd been caught completely off guard once the police showed up and were trying to escape through the fire escape which obviously didn't work, and even after that, they tried to push aside the officer's present and make a run for it, so things were looking pretty bad for them. Once they saw me, they started screaming at me about how all of this was my fault and I'd kill their sister, as if their dramatic outburst was going to help their situation in the slightest. After my neighbor had pressed charges and I'd identify them as the perpetrators, 
we were free to go. I got home around an hour ago and haven't been able to sleep since then, since I've been pretty stressed out all about this as well. I just want them to leave me alone at this point. Update 5. Hello guys. Three weeks have passed since I last updated you guys on what was happening, and I'm happy to inform everyone that my in-laws no longer have the $75,000 that they'd inherited from my wife. They had to settle and give it all to me, plus they had to pay my neighbor for the damage they'd caused to her car as well. My wife's brothers got into quite a fair bit of trouble for what they'd done, and it went on their record, which helped me prove my point in court about them being greedy for money and nothing else. Of course, the evidence was stacked against them otherwise as well, so it was no big surprise that they lost the suit. My in-laws haven't contacted me since then, and I'm thankful for that. Good freaking riddance, honestly. Anyway, like I'd said, I had no intention of keeping the money for myself since I was content with whatever I had. Instead, I split the money between all the people who'd actually been there for my wife when she needed it the most. I paid off her secretary with a sum even though she said she couldn't accept it, but I know for a fact that my wife considered her practically family, and it went both ways, so after much insistence, she accepted it as a gift from me. I also sent a bit of money to her cousin, who had visited her every single weekend, even though she lived two hours away, but she'd still driven down to the hospital to see my wife and make her feel better about everything. She's a really happy-go-lucky woman, and the only two times I've seen her tear up was first at my wife's funeral and second when I handed her the check and thanked her for always being there for us. This whole process was really emotional for me, but I'm glad that I went through with it and did something good for the people who'd been there for my wife. I hope she's happy, wherever she is. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.